uh, consent message popping up for you. Um, individual screens will be muted and video will be off um, during the presentation with Sharon Day. But um, please put any questions that you have or any comments that you have in the chat, and we will have time at the end to take a few of those. Um, my name is Leanne Littlewolf. I use she, her pronouns. Uh, I am the executive director for ACO, the American Indian Community Housing Organization. Um, ACO is an Indigenous-led nonprofit organization. We're based here in Duluth, uh, where we offer 29 units of permanent supportive housing at the Gamaji Minoba Madizimin program. Uh, we also have 10 un units of affordable housing at Indaji. We operate the Dabanuagan Shelter, which is a, a domestic violence emergency shelter. And we also offer support services, COVID response, arts and cultural programming, the Ginawind um, Indigenous Ginawin Gigi Nitao Wigamak Gomen Food Sovereignty Program. And our first social enterprise, Indigenous First, it's an Indigenous um, art gallery and gift shop. We are, we are also currently working on developing an Indigenous art center and the Niwin uh, Indigenous Food Market. So we always like to begin by acknowledging where we are. And tonight I am in Duluth uh, on the western shore of Lake Superior. Uh, the city that I'm in rests on what was, um, what is the traditional homelands of the Anishinaabe, Dakota, Northern Cheyenne, and many other tribal nations. And um, the city itself is uh, rests on ceded territory that was established um, by the Treaty of 1854 between Anishinaabe Tribal Nation and the U.S. government. And we just like to acknowledge the places we are, um, that we have, that these places have a long history that's going really far back as well as a new history that's gonna go far into the future. So I'm really grateful to be here tonight with everyone. Uh, tonight's event is sponsored by the Minnesota Department of Human Services Behavioral Health Division via our, our um, Waseya Traditional Healing Grant. And tonight our guest speaker, is Sharon Day. Um, Sharon is a Boy Sport Band of Ojibwe Tribal member and has been leading water walks for years. Uh, she'll discuss uh, the 2023 Lake Superior Water Walk and talk about the healing of the water and ourselves. Um, Nabi walks are a spiritual practice, and um, Nabi is Ojibwe and are, is water in Ojibwe. And um, the Lake Superior, I'm just going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to have Sharon talk more. She's going to talk more about that. But I do want to do a warm welcome um, to Sharon Day. And... Yeah, good evening. I uh, I don't know what I did, but um, I did something. So all I can see is the um, is the PowerPoint screen. So I don't know if anybody else can see it or. I think I think I need Becky to help with it, to make your video visible. Yeah, um, Sharon, can you um, minimize your PowerPoint for a second? Because you're not share your screen isn't shared via the Zoom, and okay. so I suspect it's hiding your Zoom window, and we can't see you either. Yeah, I. Um, I can't find the little button up in the corner. <laughs> or if you hit Escape, that sometimes if it's in full screen, that sometimes will bring it out of full screen. Oh, okay. There you go. Uh, okay, so I minimized it. If you want to turn on your video in the Zoom so we can see you. And then you should be able to share your screen at that point too from the same Zoom controls. Oh boy. Okay, I can see I can see two things. I can see the screen with everybody. Um except for myself. Okay. okay there's my there you video. are. <laughs> Hooray. Yeah. 
<laughs> okay, well, um, yeah. good evening, everyone. Um, let's see. Bujun and Indue Magani de Nagamo Mayingen and Dishnakaz, Wabashashi and Dodem, Jiguri Koy and Dao and Dishni Jomadeo, Adewana Koy and Dao. I just want to say, you know, um, miigwech to to Ivy for inviting me and uh, Leanne for um, for that nice introduction and for uh, hosting hosting this event as well. And I um, I I want to uh, start with uh, I want to do a, a few things before we actually, I, you know, the PowerPoint is mostly pictures to remind me what I'm supposed to talk about. But um, before we do that, I I want to start off just a little um, uh, differently. And so um, to all our guests that are, that are here tonight, um, I would just like to start with, um, asking everybody to get comfortable in their chair and uh, and uh, and maybe find a piece of paper and a and a pencil or a pen um, maybe you're at your desk or maybe um, there's one near you but I would like you to to have a paper and a pencil ready and then I'm going to ask everybody to simply um, close your eyes uh, for a few minutes, close your eyes and um, and and breathe. Um, so I just um, uh, take a couple seconds to to get relaxed, and then and I'm doing this too. So um, I want you to just take a deep breath in. And then exhale. And breathe in. And again, breathe in. And breathe out. And just stay with your eyes closed for a couple of minutes. Stay relaxed. And I'm going to ask you to picture in your mind a lake, a stream, a creek, maybe an ocean but some body of water that, that, that you love. And when you, when you arrive at that body of water, that river, that lake, that ocean, I want you to Think about what you've done at that water. Maybe um, you go swimming there, or maybe you go fishing there, or you see the sunrise, sunset. at the lake, at the river, at the ocean. Or maybe you hear the loon calling, or maybe you watched an eagle catch a fish. Or maybe you see yourself catching a fish. So just take a couple of minutes 
and enjoy um, that body work. I'll give you a couple minutes to do that. Maybe you're looking at Lake Superior and it's a sunny day and the sun is shining like diamonds off of the blue, blue water. Or maybe it's raining and the waves are crashing on the shore and you can see the white caps and feel the power of that most beautiful lake. Well, maybe when you're with your dad or your grandfather and you're putting that angleworm on a hook and casting out your line, Or maybe you're in a canoe out on the lake and it's time to harvest wild rice. And you can hear the grains hitting the side of the canoe. You can hear the reeds push against the side of the canoe. Whatever your memories are, that's what I want you to think about. Whenever you're ready, you can open your eyes and find that piece of paper and a pencil. Or you can use your, your phone, the notes on your phone. And just for that brief moment that you were with your body of water that you love, I want you to, to write to that body of water. And the prompt is, I love you because, and whatever comes to you in the next few minutes, just write it down. Lake Superior, I love you because. that lake, I love you because, or whatever your body of water is. I'll give you about um, five minutes uh, to do that. So I'll go look at my watch and we'll come back to the screen in five minutes.
Okay. Um, so, um, I hope everyone had a few minutes to think about their body water and um, write something um, and to their body water. And I'd just like to ask, you know, not everybody has to do this, but if anybody would just like to, to share perhaps something that they uh, jotted down. You can raise your hand, I think. We don't have it enabled for folks to unmute right now, but if okay. folks want to throw things in the chat, they certainly can. Um, well, well, that's too bad. Um, I'll just Sharon. Say, I can I can change that if you would like. Yeah, it would be nice to just hear what um, what anybody wrote. So there are some chats coming in. Um, and folks should be able to raise their hands and then Sharon can let you know when you can unmute. That should work now. While we're um, waiting, I'll just say, uh, you know, I, I wrote um, my notes to um, to Net Lake. And um, I what I said was, um, uh, Net Lake, I love you for the beautiful, delicious wild rice monoman that grows in your water. I love Spirit Island. Uh, when we were children, we would canoe out to the island and play all day, uh, swinging from the vines and, and wandering around the island. But as soon as it started to get dark, as soon as the sun began to set, we jumped back into our canoes and paddled as fast as we could back to um, uh, back to the village because you know the legend was was if you were at Spirit Island at night um, you would see your forefathers and we didn't want to see our forefathers as children so I see somebody has her hand um, Susan hello can you hear me okay yep okay um my partner Susan's here and my name is Daria. Okay. Um, we live up in Aurora and I wrote to Frying Pan Lake. And I wrote, um, Dear Frying Pan Lake, I love you because you hold me and allow me to relax and float with you. You bring me closer to myself. You inspire my curiosity you bring our family joy, peace, and a chance to be still. You glimmer in the sunshine. You roll and carry the wind. You make me feel safe. You're so colorful and intriguing. You have welcomed me and my family with open arms and offer us a clean respite from life. Thank you. That's beautiful. Thanks for letting me share. Yeah, thank you for sharing. Uh, Jacqueline? Yes, can you hear me? Yep. Okay, Woody Itkat. Um, this is what I wrote about um, Kichigami. I love you because you are. You are a reflection of time into which I gaze. You hold the stories of people who came before me. You co-create stories with me. And those will be the stories you share with future generations. I love you because you are true and tempestuous. I love you because you are also calm and steady. You hold the depths of emotions and readily display them without any reservation. I love you because you catch the sparkle of the sun and the magic of the moon. I love you because you cradle my youth in your particles and I watch them ebb and flow. I watch them transform. I love you because you are fresh and clean. I love you because you change hues on any given day and remind me that change is good. You hold the secrets of living a good life. 
I love you because you are tolerant and resilient, although you shouldn't have to be. I love you because you have stood the test of time and will remain long after I'm gone. I love you because you have sustained life along your shores and within your waters. You are a keeper and giver of life. I love you because you reflect clouds and trees and the winged and the four-legged and the two-legged. I love you because you are a dream I've dreamt many times before. I love you because you are the place where my Sami ancestors came to make a new home. And I love you because you are my home. <laughs> Olukitu, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, anybody else? Would you like me to read some of the chats? Sure. Sure. Mm -hmm. So, um, just one second here. I just want to. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna mute this person quick. Okay. There we go. Um. So some of the chats say, um, uh. Folks' favorite places are the ocean. Um, Carol mentioned, I love how the lake moves with the wind and keeps stillness in her depth. Um, Nipigon Bay on Gichigumi. I wrote to Lake Michigan, grew up in Western Michigan, then lived in Chicago. I thought about my favorite lake, Half Moon, where I worked as a camp counselor on the Iron Range. I love the community, the warmth of the lake, and the feeling of being in the water. Um, you are so beautiful in all your moods. Um, and Christina said, I loved the river for being there, listening to me when I was a lonely teenager needing a friend. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to start with this because um, you know, it's this relationship with the water um, and, and not just water, but bodies of water that we know that we're intimate with um, and that uh, that we love and it's it's remembering that relationship and holding that relationship um, that will that will give us the impetus to do something to protect um, those bodies of water. And so it's it's those relationships, those um, um, you know that that that's what it's about. And love comes in many forms. Um, you know, we're, we're mostly familiar with, you know, our relationships with people, um, sometimes our 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 dogs um other animals um but you know this love for you know the earth and you know the many many waterways um that's what will move us to act and right now um you know we're in the midst of a climate crisis and this isn't the first time that that climate change has happened um, and it may not be the last, but I don't think there can be any denying that's where we are right now. And so, uh, you know, over the years, um, uh, you know, what I've chosen to do is to take people along with me, along the, the rivers, um, the lakes, and to help people to reestablish that relationship with, with the water. And so I think now might be a good time to like, see if I can um, figure out how to pull up these, this PowerPoint um, with some of the images that, that, that I have. So, um, Becky, do you want to, Walking. You should have permissions to do that. Yeah. So if you, you probably want to, if you want it um, displayed in full presenter mode, you probably want to set that up, set your PowerPoint up to present first. And then you might have to go back to your Zoom screen to click on the green share screen button. Okay. Um... I 
Okay, now can you see it? No. Not yet, no. So if you're in your Zoom window where you can like mute and unmute yourself, there should be a share screen button. Okay, now I have to do this again. Okay, I'm back to escape and okay, it's share screen. Okay. Hmm, we can see just the top part of the screen. Yeah. Okay, so there it is. Mostly. Oh. Now? There, now I can see the whole thing. Okay, let me go back like on the start. Now can you see it? Yep, it looks great. Okay, great. Um, so uh, this beautiful image, of course, is is uh, Medewan Lodge, and the water walks. Um, you know they 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 were born among um, uh, Ojibwe ceremonies, and uh, back in uh, nineteen ninety eight. Um, the chief of the Medewin Lodge, um, uh, Bud Waywood, and said to us, what will you do for the water? And uh, so, you know, several of us did different things. I started, um, you know, he called us. He said, you know, you, you Medekwe down in the cities, uh, go help those Dakota people save Camp Coldwater. And so that's what I did. And Josephine Mandam and uh, Yvonne, um, she heard him say that same thing, what will you do for the water? And so she um, was much more thoughtful and, and got rid of all the toxins from her house and cleaning supplies and conserved water. And then um, she had this idea that came to her. Um, it was actually through somebody else who said to her, I saw you walking along the Lake Superior and uh, you were with your sisters and you all had long skirts and you had a copper pail. And uh, Josephine had been wondering what she should do next. And so, you know, she she thought I, I can do that and water has to, to move to be healthy. And so the the walks came from, you know, our, uh, in, 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 in the day when um, I think with all peoples of the world, women uh, were the life givers. We're the ones who gathered the water. You know, pictures you see from women all over the world. You know, they're the ones who are gathering the water, um, carrying the water home. And this is true for um, for Ojibwe people as well. And uh, you know, this is a Spirit Island I was talking about in my my. Um, my my little note and it's just such a beautiful place and uh this is uh, uh, uh my niece my sister and uh josephine we were um uh this is a 2011 uh, uh mother earth water walk and we are in um gulfport mississippi Mississippi um, on the uh, on the Gulf and uh, we just gathered the water and we're uh, going to head north to Superior. That was such a beautiful picture of Josephine Bond. Um, the Four Directions Mother Earth Water Walk. Uh, women carried the water from the Pacific Ocean. Uh, they were started first, and then we started from the south, Jawano, um, and then um, the next group started from the from uh, Wabano, uh, from the uh, uh, Atlantic, and then Josephine um, gathered water from um, uh, Hudson Bay, and 
this is, um, and we all met at um, on Highway Two, um, just south of Lake Superior, at a place called Cedar, um, and that was where the lodge was at the time. And um, we met there, um, and we went out on uh, the boat there on Lake Superior, and and Josephine poured. We poured all the water from those four oceans into a large uh, copper pail. And so the first boat is um, uh, is well, I can't remember. There were three boats. Uh, one boat was just singers, and another boat was the four um, main walkers. And then the other boat was also um, uh, walkers. And anyhow, uh, we poured um, the water all together. And um, when we looked down, um, we were about a mile out and we were singing and the people on the shore, there were a lot of people on the shore were singing and it was like we could hear each other singing. And when we looked down at the bottom, of the of the lake, um, you could see uh, surgeon tracks, and um, Josephine said, uh, "Who knows how long it will take um, these waters to get home, but when they do, um, they will let all of the water know that there are still human beings." who love and care for the water. Um, then this was, uh, you know, my friend, um, uh, Patty uh, from Grand Rapids took this picture. Um, this was about the seventh day of the Mississippi River Water Walk in uh, 2013. And there was a, a blizzard um, that day and uh, the day before we were walking into Grand Rapids on Highway 2, um, you know, coming from the West and the wind was blowing directly into our face. And I text um, Josephine Brown and I said, can you, can you petition uh, Dwayne uh, to be a little gentler with us? And the next day it snowed all day, but the wind was at our back. It was one of one of the most really beautiful, beautiful days um, uh, that we of that walk. Uh, these are just some youth, the kids that I work with. Um, this picture was taken uh, in Mississippi, in the state of Mississippi, and they had came to walk with us, and they're actually standing on a on a levee. Um, ceremony time, the whole kilo. Uh, 100 feet up Monk's Mound. Uh, we had a beautiful ceremony there with um, people from that area and our walkers. And this was the Ohio River. Um, I, you know, I knew when I walked the Mississippi River, you know, I have a relationship with the river because, you know, I crisscross it many times a day. <clears throat> and, uh, but, um, Barb Baker Rush kept saying, when we finished the Mississippi River, she said, well, we have to uh, walk the Ohio River because, you know, it's the biggest polluter of the Mississippi. And I said to her, you know, um, <clears throat> you know, I, I, I've walked um, from the southern border, you know, of the states. <clears throat> From the Gulf to uh, Lake Superior, and I'm the only one who walked every day. And then I walked from the headwaters um, to the Gulf uh, on the Mississippi River. <clears throat> you know, maybe somebody else could um, do that work. And um, and she kept um, bothering me. And one day, um, she gave me a um, she brought me an eagle head uh, from my staff 
And so I cried and then I swore at her and I said, okay, we'll walk the Ohio River. <clears throat> you know, I think sometimes people think that, you know, somebody, you know, who, who's a, a, an ordinary person who accomplishes something extraordinary that, um, you know, they had this epiphany or uh, some spiritual, deeply spiritual um, awakening, you know, that causes them to do the work that they do. And, uh, you know, I'm just here to say that some of us come to do some of the work that we do, you know, kind of dragging our heels and, um, and, and kicking and screaming. And um, so after Bart gave me that uh, magazine, that eagle head, and we put it on the staff, uh, we walked the Ohio River. And then on the Ohio, somebody said, um, you know, we should really walk the Missouri River. And, uh, you know, it took a while until we did that, a couple more years, but we did walk the Missouri River. And, and af at that point, um, I just sort of gave up and decided that this is probably what I will be doing until I cannot do it anymore. Now, this is an image on the Ohio River where you see um, two um, coal fired, there's a coal fired plant. And I think the other one is a cooling tower for a nuclear um, power plant and they, they share a parking lot on the Ohio River. And that is really, um, crazy. Uh, yeah. and then we walked St. Louis River um, and that was my idea uh, because of the sulfide plants that they were mining, mines that they were proposing. Um, and you know, and that's that the sulfide mines would destroy the wild rice. And um, so we walked the St. Louis River in 2015. And uh, this is a beautiful image of Jay Cook State Park. And uh, when we finished that walk, um, Karen Diver, who was the tribal chair um, at Fond du Lac at the time said, uh, and we'll send a boat for you uh, to Boy, Boy's Landing and the boat will take you to Spirit Island, um, which is um, own the Fond du Lac and purchase that island under her tenure. And um, she's told us about that and the importance of it. And so, you know, it's it really is a toxic uh, waste site um, because of all of the, um, the mining companies there. Um, but she felt like it was really important to purchase that, that land and, um, and so Fond du Lac did. And so we, the boat took us there and we went up on top of the, on top of the island and we had our closing ceremony there. And you can see some local people, um, you can see Liz and, um, see who else is in, in there local. The, um, and, oh my God. Um, she's walked with me so many times and I'm blanking on her name, but they're local people from Duluth um in this in this um in this picture and um lucas reynolds was the person who took that picture i did remember his name um and then a few years later um when we we're walking the ohio river there was a there was a um one of those coal um in, in ponds holding ponds where you know when they wash the coal um and with the water, it's filled with all kinds of uh, really terrible chemicals. And uh, one of those, um, there was a, a, a oil train um, was on a track there in Lynchburg and blew up in that, um, uh, and was right in the water there. But the but there was also an, um, a spill from one of the holding ponds um, in a river near Charlotte, um, and th those things happened. And so then um, Diane Stevenson, who's uh, Ojibwe woman living in uh, Hampton, 
um, and Virginia said, Sharon, you have to walk um, uh, you know, the James River. And so we walked the James River and, you know, here, um, you know, I always felt like I understood um, what had happened in our history. I thought I understood um, colonization. But when you are there, um, you know, at sort of ground zero for colonization, Jamestown, uh, Richmond, those places where, um, you know, uh, and, 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 and Diane's husband, Greg Stevenson, uh, somewhat of a historian, he walked with us all the way and he would tell us all of this history that had happened there. And it was really, uh, you know, it, 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 it really amazing uh, and shocking uh, to still see uh, signs along the highway that talked about um, this was where this plantation stood, this is where this man, um, uh, and, you know, somebody who uh, put together militia and, and wiped out like four tribes. I mean, that, that, if you ever get a chance, if you haven't been to Virginia, you know, like it's uh, incredible history. And, you know, we were so fortunate, um, those, those of us, you know, um, west of the Mississippi uh, to uh, have had not had contact so much later. Couple, um, this is Vicky. She's um, um, they. There was a museum there up on, on the northern part of the James River. It's not there anymore. But um, she and this was her intern that they walked with us. In fact, on the James River, there were all Native people uh, from different tribes, uh, about five or six different tribes that walked with us. And uh, and this is my buddy Perfe, uh, running along the river, carrying the water. Uh, when we finished that walk, um, we put the water back into um, Chesapeake Bay, um, and these, uh, you know, we we're walking away, and we could hear this noise, and these dolphins came. I have a video someplace of them um, talking to us. And then there was Potomac, and uh, there was a mountain pass that was too difficult for us to um, um, to cross um, on the road. And so the local people said, uh, well, we'll get you there. And so um, uh, me and the water are in the middle of that canoe there and they're, they're canoeing us down. On the James River too, there was some mountain passes that were too difficult. And, and so we were in uh, rafts um, uh, going over some rapids and that was, the water's been everywhere, it's done everything. Beautiful Potomac. And um, and then we walked the Missouri River. Uh, Faith Spotted Eagle um, asked me to, to walk the portion of the river that goes through Standing Rock. And this was before Standing Rock, the year before. And I said, well, we don't walk a portion of the river. We start at the headwaters and we would have to go all the way to St. Louis. And she said, uh, well, and I said, we'll have to raise a lot of money. And, you know, and she said, well, when can you do it? <laughs> and I said, next year. And, and so we did. And, um, you know, there was a, um, you know, a, a woman from Shine River. And I was, joking with her and I said, you know, all these horses come and greet us. And I know like the horse nation would love to carry the water for us. And um, and so finally, um, when we were uh, down by um, Southern South Dakota, um, these young women came and they carried the water for us for a day, for well, about four hours. Uh, but we poured the water into the into the bottle and put the GPS on it and, and off they went. We got kicked out of Nebraska. 
So we walked over the river and into Iowa. The troopers didn't want us walking on on the on the Missouri side. <clears throat> Here, this you know, I love this image. This is um um uh, every single one of us had been at Standing Rock uh, the year before. Um, I'd been there a couple of times, and and every one had been there. And of course, um, and the last person in this picture is Ladonna Bray Bullard, who started, um, who had the Sacred Stones camp. And uh, it was a really foggy morning, and um, Ladonna um, joined us early that morning. By the time we got to uh, the Cannonball River, the bridge over Cannonball River, the fog was lifting a little bit. And uh, because there was only five of us, uh, five or six of us, you know, we we walked um, and we carried the water and the staff at the same time, or the water and the eagle feather. And uh, but when we got to that bridge, you know, nobody said anything, but everybody got out of the van and and we all started walking with the water and um, and singing. And uh, it was a beautiful. Uh, beautiful moment and um, you know these women that walked with me uh, Sarah Thompson, Chaz Jewett, Barbara Rush and Lori Watson and of course LaDonna you know like I like very um, uh, true sisters. Uh, this woman um, Hazel <clears throat> walked with us during Standing Rock and I believe Hazel was like 90, 90 years old then. And uh, she didn't walk long, but she she carried the water. And, you know, there have been other elders um, um, that have walked with us. And whenever they come out, you know, like it's just such a, so uplifting. And um, uh, yeah, there was a, a little video of, um, did a little, video of, of Hazel and Peg walking and posted on Facebook and it went viral. And uh, and uh, the next day, um, she found our camp and left a note and said the radio people had called her up and she did an interview and she was, she was so tickled. Uh, this is the Wisconsin River and beautiful place there. And uh, we walked the Red River of the North. And on that um, staff, um, we created that staff. Um, uh, and the names of all of the people who had been pulled out of the, the Red River of the North, uh, we carried their names with us. And these are the names from about 1976 up to the present. Um, the skirt on the right, Heidi Inman, um, and there we go. Um, she embroidered the names of all the the women on that skirt, and this was in an exhibit we had at the Minnesota Institute of Art. Hidden Falls, where um, I, you know, I I moved out of the city, so I'm not there every Sunday, but the women still meet there every Sunday morning at nine o'clock to um, greet the water off of prayers. And of course, they also do it at uh, Grand Rapids and um, and in uh, and St. Louis and other places as well. But these are the ones that, that began after 2013. Uh, every day, <clears throat> you know, we begin every day with prayer, with um, song and the same and uh, reflections. And the end of the day where we stop, uh, we make a circle with whatever is available to us and um, offer our, our sema and we sing. And, um, and at that spot, wherever we end, that's exactly the spot that we begin the next day. So we have these little circles, you know, all, all across the, the United States now. And, and this, of course, is uh, Lake Superior. 
and we walked Lake Superior last year, I wanted to, um, it, it was a 20, 20 years since um, Josephine did her first water walk around Lake Superior, uh, and I wanted to, um, to honor the lake and, and honor Josephine Bon by um, walking it again. And um, maybe 20 years from now, and some of the kids I've been walking with, working with, maybe they'll walk it again. I'm not sure where this picture is. Um, <clears throat> it could be at the beginning, um, the view from Ashland, I'm not, I'm not sure. Uh, this was uh, this, this uh, beautiful lady, Kathleen from Duluth uh, showed up. She was a friend of Sarah's, and she had this little um, and little travel trailer, and she would uh, fix this lunch every day. and uh, And um, we had the most delicious lunches while we were there. But I do want to say that when we were on the Canadian side of the lake, every day our relatives to the north. Um, uh, fed us every night and, um, you know, offered us um, cabins and land um, to put our trailers on. And they were the most uh, gracious uh, hosts that uh, we've ever had. And this is a grasshopper. This is uh, <clears throat> my um, granddaughter. She uh, met her on the Missouri Walk. And uh, she's been a part of our lives ever since. And uh, this was a really, really windy day. Um, uh, on Lake Superior. And, um, you know, Melvina is um, Josephine's uh, sister. And um, she texts me and she said, you know, where are you? And uh, so I told her. And she said, I'm going to join you. And so um, she joined us that afternoon. It was her grandson uh, with her. And then behind them carrying the feathers, Emily and Jared Hughes uh, volunteers and maintains our website and does so much work uh, for Nibby. But this is uh, Melvina. And, you know, I was so, um, so happy. Uh, that she uh, that she joined us. I I'm not exactly sure where this is either, but I think it is um, uh, near Agua. Uh, and I don't know if it's at the park there or if it's south of there, but um, uh, but be, I you know I better I should do better when I take pictures of noting where they were, but this is a beautiful image. Uh, we did go down, um, you know, we hiked down that park to um, where the petroglyphs are and um, at the uh, Lake Superior Provincial Park. And, uh, and I wanna tell you that 20 years ago in 2003, I was able to hike all the way down and um, get over to the picture glass to take a picture. Uh, this time I was able to hike all the way down. <laughs> and then there's that big rock that you have to kind of walk over. And if grasshopper would have been there to hold my hand, I would have made it over that rock. But uh, I stopped there and said, okay, this is as far as I'm going. And so um, I did see them once uh, in my life though. And last time I did that. Uh, here we are at the top of the lake, um, and uh, uh, you know, if you've never done the circle tour, I encourage you to do it. It is, you know, Lake Superior it's so it's so so magical. Uh, this is um, at one of the last. Uh, reserves in Canada, um, and this is a road going into um, 
uh, Machika Cotton and uh, and on the driveway and they had numerous uh, red red um, dresses posted um, uh, and behind you can see a waterfall which I'm going to show you a better picture of. Yeah, that's the same waterfall. And uh, this is uh, the view from our campsite uh, at um, there. And uh, Chief uh, Tanji, uh, who uh, is the chief of this reserve, uh, the first time we were there, like it was just her and us, and uh, she cooked us spaghetti. And the next night they had a big feast for us and um, uh, with wonderful uh, food and um, everybody became very quite fond of bannock and moose meat. But Chief Tanchi, a uh, really remarkable uh, leader of her people. And this was uh, crossing back into the States um, at, at Sault Ste. Marie. Uh, we have to cross at 5 a.m. in the morning and uh, and I think that's Sarah, Chaz, and uh, Nicole uh, carrying the water. I started off and kind of got to the top. It's about a three mile um, bridge or you go up and then you go up to the top and then come back down. And uh, they took it from me um, someplace uh, near the top. And, uh, you know, really um, the fumes came out. I don't know what I did, but I think I'm close to the end. Anyhow, let me see. Yeah. Well, I think that's about it anyway. Um, let's see. Yeah, that was crossing into the states. So um, I would like to have a little bit of time to just answer questions or. Um, uh, have some discussion if if anybody um has any anything you'd like to to ask me or to share i know um there are other water walkers on this um i've seen them there are other water walkers on this on this call as well And if folks want to raise their hand again, um, I do have it set up so people can speak. Um, but also, I just want to note in the chat, there's some um, comments. Love Faith Spotted Eagle. What a blessing to this world. Amazing, Miigwech. Um, And truly beautiful photos in your recollection of each. Thank you so much for sharing. And Sharon, thank you for leading the walks and giving us awareness of the water. It's been life-changing. Miigwech Wado. You know the uh, the little the exercise for those of you who were here in the beginning that we did, you know just the um, you know like in person it's a lot easier um, to do that exercise. But I I try to give people um, you know a little bit more time to um, to really breathe and relax, and um, and then I give them some prompts and. Um, uh, the exercise I usually do is I have them draw a picture of their body of water and um, and then you know we share some of those pictures and and then I ask them um, after they've shared um, to write three things that they will do to um, protect the water what are three things um, that you would do to protect um, that body of water uh, and um, and then I tell them to take it home and um, put it on their refrigerator, uh, so they have a reminder of uh, what they said they would do. And um, you know, even if it's simply, um, you know, before you you take your first drink of water for the day, um, just to say thank you. Um, or when you're um, passing by a lake or a stream, um, 
you know, sometimes you're not too much of a hurry. You can stop and offer some tobacco. Uh, you know, when Josephine said, we want the waters to know that there are still human beings who love and care for the water. Um, you know, the water is a living entity. And, um, and, you know, when we communicate with the water, like it hears us, it feels us. And, uh, you know, we know that, um, uh, you know, because we believe everything is living, you know, um, a sin, the rocks, you know, they, they are living entities, you know, um, the oldest uh, living spirits on the earth, right? And so, um, we can um, communicate with the water. And so, uh, you know, so I invite you to use this exercise um, with, with um, groups, with uh, school children. Um, and, you know, when I do it, I like to, in person, I like to have, um, you know, good, good paper and, um, watercolors and watercolor pencils. So, um, you know, if you have good material, it's easier to make something beautiful. Um, but, you know, then people um, are much more apt to not crumple it up and throw it in the trash, but actually uh, have it as a reminder. But it's a simple exercise and, you know, I, I give it to you, you know, to, to use as you will, and and maybe to do some different things. And I'm a, you know, if there are no questions, um, I do not need to just continue to babble. <laughs> I'm good with. Um, Although we did get one question from Sandy, um, when is the next talk? I have no idea. Usually I do, but today I do not. Um, I do not know um, when the next walk will be. Um, um, there's been talk about different different rivers. Um, but at, but at this point, I do not know. Time will tell. You know, I want to invite you also to go to our website, um, mebiwalk, uh, dot org, and uh, there are videos and, um, you know, some of our philosophy is there, um, and. Uh, you know, you can also um, uh, share the videos with, with folks. We did get one more question, or a couple more actually. Um, what would you say is the biggest challenge when doing a walk? And do you have any advice for non-Indigenous people to do this in a way that's respectful in our communities? Uh, I think you know, we, we've had such great support um, from people across the country over the years um, that, uh, you know, and now there's all kinds of um, um, uh, what do you call it? Like electronic things like um, years ago when I would um, uh, for a walk, you know, I'd have to use the computer and um, atlases, um, different mapping systems to to map out a route and to try to get that out uh, to people, um, so people would know where we where we where we are. And of course, uh, uh, and the marvelous queen of the mothership, um, Joanne Robertson. Um, who sits at the computer up in uh, Sault Ste. Marie in, in Canada and follows us every day. Um, 
you know, just a shout out to her. But it used to be so tedious to um, plan a route and figure out all the logistics. But today, you know, there's all these apps that are like biking apps where you can um, find a uh, find find a route and um, and sometimes you know like on a map uh, the route is actually you know has to change right away because there's a bridge out or something like that. But logistics, um, uh, you know, are much easier today. Uh, all all the walks are um, volunteer. Um, when I walk, I uh, take a leave from my work. Um, I use whatever vacation time I have, and then I volunteer just like everybody else does. But we always have plenty of donations and things like that. You know, to be frank, the, the most difficult part of, um, of managing a walk is, you know, is uh, managing the humans, right? Because um, imagine yourself being with um, uh, people that you may or may not know uh, for 30 days where you're walking every single day um, and uh, you walk. You get up in the morning, you eat, um, you walk, and in the evening you um, get something to eat and sleep, and the next day you get up and do it again. And uh, so, really, it's always it, it's always been um, uh, you, you do create community. You know, there's a community, uh, but just like in um, in any community or any family. And not everybody gets along all the time. And, you know, so it's managing those things, um, really. Everything else is a piece of cake. Um, you know, uh, you're walking and and uh, the horses come to greet you. Uh, and the G-Jack, the hawks, you know, they fly overhead and they greet you. And uh, the red-winged blackbirds fly along. and and, and keep you going. Um, all of those things are so beautiful. And uh, uh, I think it was on the Mississippi walk, a reporter asked me, um, what do you hope to accomplish? And I said, um, world peace. And, you know, and the walkers were all snickering behind me. And um, they said, world peace? Did you really say world peace? And I said, yes. Because um, if we can love the water, if we can respect the water, if we can um, be grateful um, to the water, then we ought to be able to respect each other, love each other, and be grateful to each other because we are the water, right? And, um, you know, and then there's also the seven grandmother and grandfather teachings. Um, you know, if we're able to practice them, um, we would not be in these dire circumstances that we are today. But yes, yeah, so if we could teach everybody um, to love the water, be grateful, be respectful to the water, and we know that we are the water. Every single one of us um, is the water. Um, there would indeed be world peace. Um, so for the other question about what about um, uh, non-Indigenous people, you know, so uh, one of the hardest things I think for non-Indigenous people to understand is uh, a walk is not uh, a march. It, it's not a march. Um, it's not a walk. And not just a walk, it's not a run. It is a spiritual um, activity. Uh, so I so I encourage people to do their own walks, do their own runs, to do whatever else it is that they do. But um, the Nibi walks, um, those need to be led by indigenous people and indigenous people who have the teachings and, um, and know what they're doing. Um, 
So, you know, I, 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 on my watch, I invite everybody to walk with us as long as you're willing to, um, to follow our protocols. Um, uh, you know, because uh, when um, they gave us those prophecies, um, you know, uh, they said there will come a time when all people living on Turtle Island must make a decision. You know, they didn't say uh, you indigenous people have to make a decision. They said all people. And so that is why on my walks, I invite um, everybody, every uh, ev ev every uh, racial group to walk with us. Uh, because, um, of course, we are the caretakers of, um, uh, of uh, Turtle Island. Uh, but, you know, if it's left only up to us, we're really in bad shape. But if we have uh, everybody walking along with us and learning um, something, uh, reconnecting with the water, reconnecting with um, the wind and with the earth, um, you know, we will be in better shape. There was also um, just one more note that uh, Gina says, Mingwich, for what you do for Nibi, it's been truly an honor listening to you tonight. We'd love to hear the song someday that you all sang while walking. And it was noted that some of them are on the website as well. And lots of thanks also coming in the chat. Yeah, well, I want to say thank you to um, Miigwech to everyone who, you know, took the time out of their day at the end of the day to um, sign on to this um, this Zoom, you know, this way that we have of being uh, with each other um, today. It, it, it's not as good as in person, but it's um, but it's something. Uh, so, uh, eat much. Well, Sharon, I just want to, from ACO, um, I just want to say thank you for coming again and being with us. And every time that you speak, we just learn so much. I learned so much tonight. And just to center us and start us off with breathing and calming and slowing down. And then uh, having that time to really think about the relationship that we have with water and like how, like for each of us, like how powerful that relationship is. I know like I really needed that. And I couldn't think of just one body of water because I feel like there's so many um, bodies of water that have just really been there for me throughout my whole life. And so um, it was really easy to write that letter and to really get grounded in that. So that was that was really powerful. And thank you for that. And then to hear about the the ways that you have um, spent time in prayer with water is, is very. Um, it's just it's so powerful to think about the, what we can be doing. So and thank you for um, talking about actions that we can take as well going forward, and then just about how um, how much we can actually affect if we if we consider the water and be really thoughtful and intentional about that. So I just want to say thank you so much for being here with us tonight. And um, I know Ivy would love to be here and uh, this will be recorded. So we will be posting this on YouTube and we'll send the link out to everyone as well. So um, yeah, and our, our thoughts are with Ivy too tonight. For sure, yes. So uh, thank you again, everyone that has come and we'll say good evening, good night. Okay, let's giggle on them.